Welcome to another video by DHSPRC. We have the Ender 2 Pro. Technically speaking, my second modification I want to do to this uh, printer. Uh, I do have a video showing how I did this light bar with a buck converter and just an LED strip. Super simple and cheap. But what I want to do it today is the Creality CR Touch from Creality. Basically, this is the auto leveling bed. That basically you go in your, your program, you hit auto level, it will level itself in the software. And it's not that expensive to get. Uh, I do have the Creality Ender 3 Max. They do have BL touches on it. I just wanted to try the uh, Creality one, see what's the difference really between both of them. Uh, there's a lot of people say that the Creality one is better than the BL Touch. I heard videos and comments saying that the BL Touch is better than the Sierra Touch. I do not know. But before I grabbed this, I did a little bit of research seeing if it's possible to do on the uh, Ender 2 Pro. Finding the drivers from Creality was a little bit harder to find, but I was able to find them. Creality does make it for this board. This needs to be a 32-bit board. A 8-bit board, you cannot do it. But this is a 32-bit yes it does exist creality makes the drivers for it the only thing you need to get is a 3d print mount for it uh basically i found this on thingiverse they built a mount there's a couple of them uh this is one model i like it's bolted to the back and it kind of links itself on the front Let's, let's do this. You will need, if I remember correctly, it is a two mil, yep. You will need a two millimeter wrench, or you can use your Allen key. Because one of the first thing we'll need to remove is the casing of the extruder. There's a screw right in the back. And it's a little bit hard to get. Put this aside. And what you will need is scrap both sides and kind of bend it and slide it out. And don't try to slide it too much out because of the gain here prevents you from the fan. Just put it aside. And it's going to be hard to see, but on the printer itself, the head, beside the head, there's two holes. This is where this will bolt to it. But before we go a little bit further, let's open the box. You're going to be greeted with instructions. And bunches of brackets that you don't need to use for this printer. Um... This is for another model they have that's not made for this guy here. Just, it's too bad it's not. I'm gonna use it to take this out. Then you have two other brackets. Again, not made for this printer. And in the bottom, you'll find the main wiring and some screws. They do give you some the zip ties. Put that aside. And you'll notice you have your BL touch. It is a little bit, kind of a little bit larger than the original one, the BL touch. 
one of the major difference is the BL Touch, the wire comes out in the back side. On the CR Touch, they come directly from the top. And the pin that comes out is steel, is metal on this guy, instead of plastic. Is that better than, that's what it's hard to say. I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Now this will come and screw itself right here. <clears throat> We're going to grab the shorter ones. So I'll keep the longer ones for here. Go directly to the mount. And they should they should screw in directly. I think it might have been an afterthought from Coreality when they decided to bring the Ender 2 back as the pro version. They never thought of making a mount for it. There we go. And to make my life a little bit easier I will connect this wire right away. That way I don't need to mess with it once it's on the, the extruder. Not the extruder, a hot hand. There we go. Plugged in. Now we're going to grab our longer screws. And go directly to the printer head. Screw the first one in. Not put it all the way in. And grab the second one. And there's one thing I want to make sure that once they're screwed in, it doesn't hit the main arm. It doesn't. That's perfect. Now I'm just going to throw our wires on top. And reattach this guy here to make sure now this is all the way in you'll need to kind of force this to clip in the fascia of the uh, hot hand protector I'm just not sure I don't want to break my mount too worst case <laughs> just need to reprint another one That's one of the reasons I would have loved Creality of printing, put printing one, make, having one made in steel. Because you can't clip it. And there's maybe one way I could do it here. I want to see here.
if I put this side in like this, clip it, and this is what happens. And I'm back. Uh, unfortunately, the amount I was trying to use, I printed, broke off. I went and printed another model that just screws into the back. The only thing I don't like, it's a little bit flimsy. Uh, somebody could put a little piece of two-way tape behind here and just hold it to the head. But that personally what I would do. Now normally what I do is I take the time to run the wire itself in the gain and bring it underneath the printer. But for the sake of the video, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to zip tie it to, the, to, to these guys here and I'll do it after. go close this guy to gain access to the side of the machine and to have less trouble what I'm going to do I'm going to remove the screen I'll be able to lean completely on that side now you won't be able to really see what I'm doing here, but you will need to remove this foot. They're very well glued. You'll be able to reuse them. Because you'll have a screw here, you'll have nine screws total to remove. Because now you need to expose the main board. And don't worry, all these screws are all the same size. If you mix them around, doesn't matter. Remove the, tr the tray. One more and we're good. And then slightly pull on it. Don't pull too hard because you do have a fan. Just unplug it. And this is the bottom part you'll be able to remove. Now we'll need to bring our sear touch wire and feed it with the other wires. What I'm going to do here, flip the machine upside down, why not? Bring a wire, zip tie it, and you'll notice right here, there's a place to plug this in. I have a little bit of hot glue on mine, I don't know why. Plug it in right there and rebuild the machine and you're golden. Don't forget to put your software, the firmware to upgrade the machine to the BL Touch. And once that's done, you'll be able to go in the software in the main connector here, the main board, 
or main screen, should I say, and do your, uh, your adjustment to your BL touch. Grab your measurement from here to your hot end, and you'll be able to use your uh, BL touch. What I'm going to do here, wrap this everything up back up in one piece, and come back to this video and show you, show, show you how it works. And we have the CR Touch installed on the machine. Uh, I did the main setup on it, make sure everything was working, tested it out. It works very awesomely. Um, now, to be able to do the physical setup of the CR Touch on your machine, it's not that you put the software in and it does it by itself. Unfortunately, no, there is some setup you need to do in the machine itself. I'm not sure if I did explain it in the beginning of the part. Uh, the amount that I did 3D print here that hooked up here, it broke. Uh, found another one on Thingiverse. I will link it in the description in the bottom where I grabbed this mount. Basically, you, when you remove your shroud, it screws in here. And I just put a little bit of two-way tape preventing from vibration. Because uh, when <laughs> the head was printing, this vibrated a bit and I didn't like the sound. It doesn't matter, it won't affect your print, it's just a sound. But to be able to do your physical main touch in it, uh, once you install the software in the machine, I will link the software where I got it for the CR2 Pro. Uh, basically what you do, you put it on an SD card with nothing else on it, you pop the SD card in the machine, Turn the machine on. That pad will turn on. It'll be blank. It'll do what it needs to do. Don't touch it. And then the pad will come back with the main information you always saw in the beginning. What I do, turn the machine back off, turn the machine back on, and I remove my SD card you'll have your software installed on the machine now looking in the software here you'll find some new folders and some new information but there's a couple of things you need to do first one of the first thing what i'm going to do i'm just going to move my camera and zoom in to the pad hoping my camera wants to focus sometimes doesn't like it okay you see your main information. What we're going to do is go to motion and we're going to do auto home. What it's going to do is basically the head will go back to the beginning. The bed will go back to the back to the back too. And it's going to go down, probe, go back up, go down, probe again. Now, basically, right now, if you see from the BL touch to the bed, it says on the display here, it's at the 10 millimeters. And there's more than 10. The difference between these two here, yeah, there are more. Now what we need to do is go into software, in the pad, find our measurement, and input it in the computer here to be able to tell the, B the CR touch where is zero. Because right now, when you saw the physical head go down and the probe probed it, that's where I think it's at zero. When the probe is deployed, touches the bed, oh, this is zero, okay, I know where it is now. And actually, it's not. On this guy here right now, I do know my measurement. But let I'll show you how I did it here. Now, basically, I'm going to see if I could, if I can, should I say. Can't really show you both at the same time, but let's do this. 
and I'm going to go to my pad. I'm going to go underneath motion, move axis, and then I'm going to go down to move the Z axis. And now, this is a part if you're not sure what you're doing, because you could create damage. Because it, it's, you can make it go up by 10 millimeters or go down by 10, by 1, or even point. back I'm gonna go by one because like I said I know my measurement See, right now it says plus 10 I'm gonna grab a piece of paper just put it underneath the uh, the head and I'm just gonna basically go down to one and there's a lot of movement I'm gonna try to do this like this here I know you cannot really see the keypad. Fortunately, I, I don't know why my camera doesn't want to, but you see the piece of paper in the corner. It still has a lot of movement. What I'm going to do, exit, and I'm going to go 0 0.1 millimeters as I don't want the head to jam into my bed. I'm going to go to plus seven, still a lot of movement, plus five, still a lot of movement, and I'll even put it at zero, there's still a lot of movement. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just go down closer to my measurement instead of making you guys wait. Now I'm at minus one, still a lot of movement. And even can go down to two for me. Still a lot of movement. Minus 2.3. And the 2.3 is the measurement for my printer. Because of the piece of paper, I can grab it and move it. Okay, I'm going to go minus 4 or 2.4. And the paper, I've, I'm having a hard time taking it out, but I can. I'm in between two measurements. I always keep it at 2.3. I never had issues. Even if I go minus 2.5, see the, the papers, I can't still take it out like I did. And with a little bit of play, I can even put it back in. I couldn't even say my measurement is minus 2.5 if I wanted to, but at 2.3, it prints fine for me. Now, you're going to take this measurement and write it down. 2.5. Let's, let's say it's 2.5. 2.5. I'm going to write it down. Okay. Now, once you did that, we're going to exit. Go back to the Main, one of the main screens and go down to configuration in configuration you'll see probe z offset you're going to select the probe z offset and we're going to go minus the 2.5 and this is a long part there minus 2.5 or 2.50 and we're gonna hit select now you'll see on the screen it says probes the offset minus 2.5 now what we need to do is go down to store settings and hit store and you'll hear a, like a beep If you don't do that, store the settings. When you're going to power off your printer and power it back on, it will lose that measurement. Now, if I turn the printer off, 
bring it back on and go in my menu and configuration that will stay at minus 2.5 like I said, if you don't do store setting, it will lose that measurement. Now we're going to go back to main, hit motion. We'll do auto home. Let's remove my piece of paper here. That should give me more wire for the keypad. I wouldn't be able to bring closer to the camera. But right now, what it's doing, it's finding the zero. And it goes back up. And now, I'm not sure if you can see it or not. But it says in the Z in the corner, it's at 12.52. I'm going to put my piece of paper underneath. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to turn it that you can see maybe both at the same time. Let's hope so. I'm going to go back in motion, move Z, move Z axis, go on to move Z. Now we know our measurement. I'm going to go in the uh, minus one. And technically, if I bring this down, 2.5, my piece of paper still moves. 1.5 still moves. Now I'm going to go to 0.1 millimeters. Bring this down to one. My PC paper still moves. Bring it down to zero. And my PC paper not moving anymore or just the measurement I want. That tells me that basically when the probe probed the bed, went back up and then went back down, it knows where it's zero is. Let's say you would have done that, and here, instead of being at zero, you would have been in minus, uh, let's say minus five or whatever measurements. That means you did not enter your, your measurement correctly. It should be at zero here. You're not plus, you're not minus, you're at zero. And this is how you set your BL Touch Z offset in the software of Curiality. Now, if you do have like a Marlin, things like that, you could do it computer wise or just on the screen here. Uh, my two Ender Max, Ender 3 Max that I have beside me here, uh, those guys are done in Marlin directly because they have custom firmware. This guy here, the Ender 2 Pro, is running 100% Creality software. Uh, I wanted to make sure to try it out, be able to guide you guys. And I'm having zero issues. This machine's been printing fine uh, for a couple of weeks now. I've been using it. I love it. Great printer. But again, like I said, this needs to be at zero. As long as you make sure go back main under configuration, you set up your probe Z offset. It's set up, and once you did that, don't forget, again, do store settings. And let's say you play with it, you don't remember what you did, you could do load settings. Basically, if you did change something in it, I just did the load settings, that's cool. Um, let's say you did change some stuff in it, you're not sure what you change or something's not right, do load settings, it will bring it back your last time you did the store settings. And this, like I said, this is how you set up your CR Touch on the Ender True Pro. I will put a link 
in the description where I got the software. And I will put a link in the description for the mount itself. And if you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any comments, put down below. I'll gladly answer you guys. And don't forget, give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel. Thank you for watching.